Hello and uh, welcome to the Curbside Chat. Again, that's the video podcast series when we talk about the important issues of the aftermarket with the people who make it happen. Um, we'd like to welcome you again for another a great uh, Curbside Chat uh, webinar where we're going to have Bob Jaworski, our AI chairman, uh, back at our host. Looking forward to have him introduced to his guest. But uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to first recognize that today, March 8th, well, uh, recognizes that it's International Women's Day, and I'd like to uh, call upon us all to celebrate the women in the automotive aftermarket and their incredible achievements. Also, before we get uh, started, I'd like to also recognize the ongoing contributions of our sponsors at AI Canada. Again, thank you very much for your generous support. Uh, without your financial contribution, it would not be possible to host events uh, like this. Also, We'd like to point out that if you're joining us live on Ubelo, uh, please don't hesitate to put your questions in the QA tab. Uh, we're going to do our best to get to, to some of those uh, questions throughout the show. So I guess, uh, well, further ado, without further ado, let's uh, turn it over to Bob Jaworski to introduce uh, today's guest. Bob? Good afternoon, JF, and hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here today. Our guest on today's episode is Yasna Smilchik. Yasna is the Canadian Country Sales Director for Gates Corporation. I'm going to be discussing with Yasna how parts manufacturers are preparing for the future of electric vehicles, the rise of e-commerce, and online shopping of vehicle parts, and the fast evolving preferences and demands that are likely to shape the industry for years to come. Hi, Yasna, and welcome to Curbside Chat. Thank you, Bob, and happy to be here. Well, let's jump right into it. Yasna, when we were out for dinner in January, we were discussing how in the media these days, we are hearing a lot about electrical ve electric vehicles. What does Gates Corporation think about electric vehicles coming into the market? So Gates is very actually excited about electrical vehicle uh, entering the market. We see this as, as a, an important opportunity, specifically in the thermal management space. Um, we are seeing e electrical vehicle share in new production rapidly uh, increasing all through. It will take some time for the mix to shift in the aftermarket, given the sheer, sheer size of the aftermarket and the time that it takes for the vehicles to get into that uh, seven to 12 years sweet spot window. Well, you know, I, I think that certainly the ability to adapt is crucial to any company's success. So. Can you share with us kind of your approach to uh, change and adaptation? So I, yes, Bob, I could not agree more with you. Uh, uh, as we all know, it's uh, what they said, it's not the species that they're more strong, it's the species that they are more adaptable, that they survive. So, and we saw that through the COVID and all that you, if you want to, to stay uh, alive and to, to be in a, in a top, you have to adapt and change. Look at us now, we are doing this podcast virtually instead of being in the same room. So we, we are adapting to that as well. So adapting is a big part of what we do at Gates and it's a big part of what I like to do in my life as well. Well, that's great. So back to our discussion on electric vehicles, the EV has fewer moving parts than the internal combustion engine. What does it mean for the parts that Gates manufactures and sells? So uh, even that uh, EV has a fewer mov moving parts than uh, our, our traditional vehicles, they have incre incredible uh, complex thermal management system. Those uh, thermal management systems are comprised comprised of numerous coolant hoses, electrical valves, electrical water pump, uh, all of which are core to gates. We have been in a leader in thermal management solution for a traditional vehicle, hybrids, and now electrical vehicle as they're entering the aftermarket. We have been investing in coolant coverage for electrical vehicle as well. The, the thermal management system are critical to the overall vehicle performance and rapidly uh, reliability, sorry. So we remain a manufacturer of mission critical components and solutions. Unlike the traditional vehicle, the thermal management system 
can operate almost continuously. Even when you are charging your co uh, car um, or or uh, or installing OT OTA over the uh, over the air updates, this is and this is very positive for uh, for us. Uh, Given the about while we lost some of the PT product uh, uh, on an electrical ve vehicle, um, um, namely mainly belts and tensioner, we are very optimistic on an electrical vehicle and the opportunity to present uh, that going to present to Gates. So we we seeing this from uh, let's say it's changing uh, our content from one hundred twenty five dollars to three hundred uh, to three hundred dollars that going to be installed on electrical vehicles. Well, we know that Gates has been a, a leader in the technology side in the past, and it's great to hear that certainly Gates is going to be there uh, well into the future. So on the technology, major technology leaps in connectivity, electrification, and shared mobility are at the forefront of today's vehicle. What shifts are you seeing with the different players in the automotive industry? All through um, Gates is a tier one uh, supplier to numerous OEMs. We remain committed to working with other suppliers in, uh, in our industry associations to ensure that the independent aftermarkets continue to get access to the needed tool information, uh, procedures, and parts to repair vehicle. We are very committed, commitment, committed to the supporting our rights to repair legislation. For, and we firmly believe that the vehicle's data should be um, be uh, should belong to the consumers, and that vehicle's owner should have a, the uh, choice of where they want to and with whom they wanted to service that vehicle. No question. I appreciate your comments on the uh, right to repair, and I think for the aftermarket, that's certainly a, a huge issue and going to be even uh, more important as we move uh, forward. Another area in the industry, what do you think about the increase of e-commerce or online purchase of vehicle parts? I think that pushes manufacturers and distribution to have the best in class digital uh, uh, assets, I images including 360 rich marketing material, uh, uh, futures and benefits, statements of all of parts and etc. All areas where Gates is the leader. We have been investing in e-commerce uh, rapidly uh, content for many years now and have uh, what we believe is the leading pro product data and content. So uh, this increasing digital age uh, requires the brand owners to control their brand online, and we see uh, this as a good thing. It's hard to to hard to let distribution to do this for you, as you are not as they are uh, not invest uh, as as you are as uh, as you know. You guys uh, distribution uh, wraps many lines and hundreds of brand, of, of brands. So no no one will um, care about uh, as much about your brand online as you do. I, I certainly, from the distribution side of the business, you know, we, we look at the e-commerce, it, it certainly can be a, a very large positive in how we do business, uh, you know, being able to have that customer coming in uh, online to our business. Uh, you know, we, we also know that there's uh, threats around that and it's one of those things that we do have to manage and we certainly appreciate when we have our uh, suppliers that are, you know, watching that e-commerce president presence very closely, you know, within their company and and doing things to, uh, you know, help us on the distribution side for that. Hey, Bobby, if you, if you don't mind, I, I need to jump here. And fascinating to hear your 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 comment here, uh, Yasna. A quick question, you know, you, you talked about right to repair, which is is a very important topic for us at AIA and uh, the importance to continue to have access to the information. And as you said, you know, there's this five to seven years uh, um, gap, I guess, before, you know, gates have to be fully invested in the EVs. But uh, when you think about right to repair and in the time we have to the emergence of EVs, would be any, any kind of advice you would give uh, to the wholesalers or the automotive service repairers? You know, how do they get better prepared for uh, that EV revolutions and how they can you better support maybe a uh, right to repair? Oh, uh, Jeff, uh, that's a, 
that is a hard question, but I, I, I honestly think if um, I was just prior to preparing for this podcast, I was reviewing a lot of uh, of the of the ma- uh, market uh, marketing information and all that, and I think there is a lot that everybody can use and prepare for that. There is a, some such a good data over there that you can see what you will need in a year, in a two years, in a three years, so that you you can help prepare yourself and you can be uh, be ready for that change that that is coming. Yeah, good point. So being informed, be connected, in fact, participating in, in activities where there's a lot of information like today, what we talk about that future, I guess, would be would be a good recommendation. Excellent. Well, back to you, Bob. Okay. Well, yes, yeah, so more onto the personal side, but I know from our previous conversations, I know you have a very interesting personal story that began in 1994 when you arrived in Canada from the former Yugoslavia. How has your experience coming to Canada and becoming a naturalized Canadian shaped your career and helped you get to where you are today? And maybe share a little bit about your story. Uh, I, know, I know we've got some extra time here. So it, I always find, I find it very fascinating, especially on a day like today where we're celebrating you know, women. It's a, a really great story. Thank you, Bob. So, uh, as uh, as you know from our conversation, I I came here back in 1994. I was a, I was a refugee. Um, back um, my hometown was uh, destroyed by war, and I was one of the lucky students that Red Cross came and took out of, uh, of our city to save us. And I end up in Canada, and I could not uh, be happier. Uh, for for that, I I'm getting a little bit emotional about all, all all this what is happening in Ukraine and everything because it's bringing some of the memories back to me. But uh, as Bob, you and well as you and I we spoke, uh, the moment I came to Canada, I realized I won my lottery. I don't play the lottery because coming to Canada back in 1994 was my my me winning the lottery. And was it a hard? Yeah, it, it was hard. Um, I came here. I didn't speak the language, and it was a uh, it was a little bit of struggle. But I I've, I'm firm believer into that. What doesn't break you makes you uh, stronger. And me going through that um, ordeal, coming to Canada, being uh, away from my family, I came here all alone. And I think it just made me stronger and it made me appreciate everything that I have in my life. And just starting from the bottom, when I started in my first company, I started on the assembly line, moving from there to a, a, a finance department, taking some finance uh, uh, finance classes, getting my credit and collection degree, working over there for many years in a, in a credit and collection, and then realizing that... Um, you know what? I want something else. I don't want to end up being in finance my whole life. And uh, just finding that courage to leave the company that I was with 15 years. Uh, uh, I was there with them for 15 years and they were my family. They were, I met my best friends there. So that was, uh, that was almost uh, hard as leaving my real family over there in Yugoslavia and coming to, to, to Canada. But what I uh, want to encourage everybody, you know what? Just always take that leap of faith and just go. Don't don't let anything stop you. So, as I left my first company, moved to something else, and then end up here at Gates, I could not be happier about that. A, a truly inspiring story. I know that you know you shared a lot of a lot of detail with me about just you know some of your first jobs and and things like that, and how you had to you know work work through that. And you know I think that it's fantastic, uh, you know, just how you've managed to, you know, work as hard as you have and, and put yourself in the position you have today. So just kind of on that topic, Jasna, women, you know, remain significantly underrepresented in the automotive aftermarket. What changes do you see happening? What advice would you give to our industry uh, to continue opening doors for women to drive their careers forward? Uh, thank you, yeah, Bob. You are totally correct. Um, so uh, I'm really lucky to work for the company that takes diversity and inclusion very seriously, and they are committed to 
to that. And, and um, four of our, nine of our board members are women, for example. We have, but we still have so much more work to do on this front. Uh, and but I can say I can say this honestly, we are making a lot of progress. If I see where we are now and where we were about seven, eight years ago, we did made a, some uh, some uh, some progress. But this is still a priority for all of us. The uh, the aftermarket industry uh, lacks of gender diversity among um, ex executive team. At uh, the top executive level, for example, we we need to make changes uh, that. Uh, that to attract more women in the industry. In uh, I think in 2018, only 16 women, only 8% were executive in the top 20 motor vehicles part companies uh, in the Fortune uh, Global 500. I mean, in the number in a row, a row, um, grew from 2014, but it still is not where we where we wanted that to be. I mean, women, um, we must attract women and even not just some women, even the young talent to our industry. And that's going to be that's going to be hard because the young talent, for example, they don't consider this as a fun industry and something that they want to do. So that's going to be. But if we want to to stay on the top and survive, we, we have to find a way to attract that. Also, um, by including the women, uh, our works uh, workforce just expanded by almost 50%. And as women, we have so much to offer. We, we, we need to look into shifting diversity into really high gear to close this the close the aftermarket industry talent gap. Um, at the same time, the automotive industry gears up to race ahead with electrical uh, electrical cars, as we talk, and self-driven cars. Um, uh, the pending talent crisis is holding that back. So women are often uh, under undervalued resources in this automotive sector can um, indeed pull the companies out of this rut. Uh, women are accountable. Uh, 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 we are. Uh, we have a. Uh, we, uh, we have a. Uh, um, we are ready to accomplish so much. We have a uh, confidence. We use uh, effective communication skills. Uh, we are very self-aware. Sh we show empathy and uh, honestly, and we strive to inspire. Uh, and we are very optimistic. So I, and, we, and we can multitask. So there is all all those attributes that we can offer to our industry. And I I think just as of today that on this International Women's Day that you guys invited me to to participate, it's just an amazing thing. And I think just doing more of that really going to help us get to the next level. Thank you. This is inspiring. Thank you very much, uh, as, yes, now for those inspiring uh, message. We are monitoring the chat. A couple of comments I'd like to read uh, for everyone's benefit. Um, one comment from an attendee says, you know, we have a shortage of mechanics now. And what's going to happen when we electrify in all these vehicles and the prior knowledge of uh, our mechanics is essentially irrelevant. We, you know, someone says, I, I do worry about this. Um, the other comment from the attendee is the only way is to get the young techs owning their own smaller shops. We need to bring back the mom and pop shops for the aftermarket survival. So some comments here of people are, you know, being obviously concerned about the evolution and transitions to EV vehicle. There's one last comment is I believe the aftermarket will have to capitalize and compete for the chassis maintenance and repair. As for the powertrain of an EV, it will be costly to repair, requiring vehicle replacement. Not much different from today's ICE vehicle. Today's ICE vehicle is so complicated that engine repairs leads to vehicle replacement. And would you agree with that, uh, Yasna, that as we get into EVs, we continue to have more complex vehicle to, uh, to fix uh, as, as it is today? I again that is that is a really hard one because I mean look at us now we we thought that we would be buying a new cars but you can get a new car so we are all trying to repair our cars and get to know so it's really hard to predict what go, what going to happen with the electrical vehicle in that regards but I honestly think that there're going to be a lot of um opportunity for us to for, for gates and our distribution to work with uh, uh, and repairing electrical vehicles. 
Thank you, Yesna. Well, uh, uh, back to you, Bob, uh, for more questions for Yesna. Sure. You know, just a, a, a comment on that. You know, I've, I've been in the industry for you know pushing thirty-five years now, and uh, you know, I recall over time there's been several different times where the business is done. You know, the ad advantage advantage of you know moving to fuel injection. Well, that was going to end any you know, repairs on the engine. And then we moved into ABS brakes and that was gonna be the end of the brake business. And the one thing I can say of this industry in all my years is its ability to adapt, move on, take the challenge. And and there, there's gonna be a future uh, in the aftermarket. There's no question. Is it going to be a challenge? Yeah, I believe it will be. But, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, from what I've experienced over the years, the aftermarket is pretty resilient and we'll find ways to make sure it's going to be able to exist moving well into the future. So the uh, Jasmine, next question, the upheaval of 2020 has led to fast changing preferences and demands. And we're seeing major shifts in how companies operate with their teams, uh, build trust and interact with their customers. From your perspective, what are your predictions for how expectations will continue to evolve in the near future and what can companies do to meet them? Uh, yes, so I think 2020 taught us a lot. And again, we are constantly talking about that uh, adaptability. I think it taught us all how to be more adaptable and how to to change. Uh, again, in just prior to that, uh, 2020, there was so many different things. And I know uh, in personal, I I was believer that uh, my team has to be on the road more. But that 2020, if that 2020 taught me anything is, is how to kind of adjust and reset and take a look what is actually what they're actually going to be benefit to our the distribution will we're just my team coming over there and talking to them be of the benefit or is uh, is it some kind of different support that we can offer that we can work more with our um, uh, our distribution that we can be uh, what can we do to be better partner and I think uh, there the a lot of 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 distributions and a lot of manufacturers they took that that as uh, that 2020 to change and to become better partners to each other. Yeah, I think there's, there's no question in what you're saying that, you know, we saw the change and, and I think for the most part, there's been a lot of a lot of things that will be continually implemented moving forward. Uh, you know, the information, the ability to get information out quickly, meet with key people uh, on a, a more regular basis are all things. I certainly you know, believe that there's the importance of relationships uh, with our suppliers. And, and that's, you know, I, I believe a face-to-face -face is very important that side, but the being, the ability to get information out to your customer base and us for us to be able to get information out to our customer base, uh, this technology has changed things. And I believe it in a good way. And uh, I think it really gets down to seeing a hybrid of what we saw in, in the, you know, 2020, 2021, and what we saw previous to it. So I think that there's lots of potential moving forward. So uh, final question, we're consider continuing to see consolidation in our industry. What do you think is next in Canada? Um, yeah. So I uh, Gain has been in a Canadian market for a very long time. Uh, and over the this time, we have developed a strong brand and great re relationship with our customers. Uh, and we stay focused on the uh, on the things that we can control and and on continuing to deliver the best product to our customers. Uh, if, if we do that, I believe that we will continue to be successful in this market. Well, thank you very much, Yasna. Quite frankly, it, as we all talk about the fundamentals, right? Good customer service, making sure, taking care of the customer, and and glad to, you know, you making reference to the fact that we've you've been a, a great uh, company established in Canada for a very long time, for sure, and, and I very much appreciate the ongoing support of Gates to AIA Canada. Um, this is already uh, getting close to the end. I know we've had some more questions on the chat. We'll do our best to uh, follow up with some answers to those questions uh, after the, the podcast. 
But uh, for our final segment of today's shows, uh, I'm going to give it back to Bob to uh, take it away with our uh, famous rapid fire questions. Back to you, Bob. So, Yasna, we have five questions. <laughs> Tell us the first thing that comes to mind, and you have two minutes to answer all the questions. So the first one's easy one. Make and model of your first car. Oh, my God. Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> yes. Uh, what is the one common myth about your profession that you want to debunk? Oh, uh, one common. Uh, people, they think when you're in sales that you travel and you travel to all these great places and you get to see them. No, you don't. You only see the hotel room. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate 100% with that one. When you get, get back from a, a week long trip and they say, how was your holiday? Uh, that doesn't sit well with me. Most. No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> so if you could instantly learn any skill, what would it be? If I could, if I think being here in Denver, skiing. <laughs> I don't know how to ski. I would love to learn to, to ski. I, it seems so much fun. <laughs> well, you're in the right place to learn, that's for sure. Beautiful area. Yes. What advice would you tell your 18-year-old self? Don't give up. Just don't give up. Well, I think your your life to this point has demonstrated that you told yourself that quite a bit over the years. So yeah, it's uh, hard today, but tomorrow going to be better. Just keep moving forward. Great. And what is your most memorable road trip that you've been on, and where did you go? Ah, uh, I think one of them is. Uh, few years back, um, we we took a road trip from Toronto to Montreal with uh, our kids and dogs, and so it was it was a lot of fun. It was uh, it was a lot of uh, <laughs> it was a long trip, but it was uh, one of the best trips and trips that are gonna always stay with me. Well, I think your your trip from Yugoslavia probably was a pretty. <laughs> Pretty good trip. <laughs> yes, some parts of that trip I wanted to forget. <laughs> yeah, I can totally understand that. So, so Yasna, thank you for taking the time to join us today on Curbside Chat. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and learning about your journey in the aftermarket. And to our attendees, thanks for tuning in today. Thank you for having me, Bob. Thank you. Well, thank you, Yasna. Thank you, Bob, for hosting today's event. Once again, a big thank to go to our sponsors who continue to support us and make these events possible. Thank you to all of you for joining us. And until next time, well, take care. <laughs>